Thank you so much, Indiana CPA Society, for inviting me to speak about inclusive leadership. I am absolutely delighted to be here and to extend congratulations to Erlen on being your incoming chair and also to Jennifer on your amazing chair year. When we talk about inclusive leadership, many people wonder what exactly that means. And for me, it means when everyone has a seat at the table, not because they have to, but because they need a, an understanding of diversity of leadership, they need an understanding of how it responds more appropriately to their client base, their customer base, their business partners, and it becomes an environment where the inclusive leadership starts to turn over and over and over great ideas, it moves forward the organization in more productive and highly effective ways, and that turn, that churn of just having Everyone with a seat at the table means that everyone has an opportunity to put their best foot forward. There are a lot of different definitions, but that's what it means for me. It also, at a very personal level, means that little girls, like the picture you have there of me in Baltimore, inner city, which is where I grew up, can aspire to do any and everything. My parents told me that I could do anything. If I studied hard enough, if I paid attention to what my elders told me, if I did my homework, but they also told me that I would have to work twice as hard to get half the credit. They said, Kimberly, you're a female and you're black. And there will be people who will stereotype you. There'll be people who will want to contain you and put you in a box, but you can overcome those things. And so that meant for me, dreaming big. It meant really not limiting myself by the environment or the circumstances, looking for coaches, mentors, and sponsors. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about what that means. But when you look at where I grew up, this is it. And, and the reason that I show this, and I've shown it pretty much all over the world, is because I want us to understand that if you're going to have uncommon talent, you're going to have to look in uncommon places. And that means not the usual. It may not be your alma mater. It may not be necessarily your religious organization. It may not be in the golf club, uh, country club, or wherever it is that you may go ordinarily to find talent. We're going to have to stretch outside of our comfort zone. The stakes are high. I think we all are well aware um, as we try to compete and move forward in our environments that we're gonna to have to think differently. At AICPA, this is a wall in our former office. And so when I look at that wall, I feel, um, I feel the, the weight of the moment of being the first black chairman to have um, been on that wall. And I also recognize that I had allies, that there were champions and people who supported me there are people who absolutely understand why diversity of thought is important. There are people who absolutely understand why it's so important for organizations to look across the entire spectrum of our profession, government, not-for-profit, consulting, education, business and industry, and yes, also very importantly, public accounting. I think it comes back to the state society and I know from working with the Indiana CPA Society that you are a society of leaders. And as leaders, you support your members, the businesses, and the public in Indiana. And I'm looking for, forward to you picking up inclusive leadership and leading from the front. This is a challenge, I think, for many people. But I know that we have the best and the brightest. This is a, a slide of the Maryland Association of CPAs. And it just goes to show that it is an environment where we have mentors and coaches, sponsors, a safe zone where we can learn new ideas and concepts, and we can ask questions for things that we've never considered before. There are things that we're thinking about today that we would have never considered previously. And this is the exact time that we should be thinking about those things so that we can have 
many more people, if not on these magazines, but certainly different ones, being recognized and highlighted, highlighted for their credibility, capability, and their achievements. And so when I look at just where we are from a profession-wide perspective, the why, yes, there's a human issue of the why of inclusive leadership, but there's also a strategic business imperative of why strategic leadership, why inclusive leadership really matters. We have a number of different concerns from regulatory complexity to consumer empowerment, all the way around to geopolitical instability. And I'll tell you, when I think about um, those different trends, they are exasperated and escalated by the environment we find ourselves in. And that environment, as it relates to natural disasters, a recession, the pandemic we're in right now, um, racist and biased events that we've had play out over the news and, and probably have been happening meanwhile every day, we just didn't have it on video, and then also the violence and destruction that we see playing out. Those events coupled with the trends we've been watching are creating an environment where we absolutely are going to have to reimagine the path forward. Business as usual will not apply. There are organizations that are no longer here. Organizations that maybe through no fault of their own, just technology changed. We are no longer using VHS, VHS tapes. Um, we're not talking about Polaroid Kodak cameras anymore. We're not talking about rotary dial phones. We're not even really talking about the library when all of the information is available on the internet. That's just a snapshot. What's going to happen in your industry with your customers, with your clients? We need the best and the brightest. There is a war for talent. And as we reconsider how we are going to engage, how we're going to offer new goods and services, how we're going to ensure that the public interest is maintained, we're going to have to look in places for talent that we haven't before and we need to bring everyone along so important to bring everybody along because without that we're going to have inconsistent results your team members all need to be on the same page especially when you consider what's happening with the COVID 19 environment from an economic perspective, not even to mention that it's a public health crisis and people are dying. But when you think about the economies of it, these leader organizations are just a few of the ones talking about um, the leadership that's going to be required as we navigate going forward. But I am very confident. I have a great deal of confidence in us that we can manage and help our clients get through this environment. We've had other major tragic issues occur and that's just a snapshot on, a, on the page. We are trusted advisors. We can make a difference. We have made a difference, but we have to lead from the front. And inclusive leadership says, it starts with me. It absolutely starts with me and we personalize it to be being intentional. Where are you looking? Who are you hiring? What considerations are you taking into account? Do you really know the people that are purchasing from you or you want to be clients, new uh, industries that you plan to go into? Do you know the business decision maker from an inspiration standpoint? Inclusive leaders have to be inspirational. These are challenging times. People are worried, they're afraid, they've been homeschooling. Black and African Americans have been afraid to go outside of their homes and interact with the police or interact even at bird watching. So an inclusive leader is gonna have to put their arms around everyone and assure us all that you can help us out of this environment that we're in, that you have ideas and suggestions. And not that you have them all, but certainly that you are willing to crowdsource them across the organization and that you're willing to be accountable for the results. That's gonna be especially important. It also means taking a hard look at our own biases. And so innovation and technologies like artificial intelligence, blockchain, cybersecurity, big data and cloud, 
We need the best and the brightest thinking about these ideas and strategies from different levels. We need to manage our risk. We need to figure out how to improve quality as we go forward. We need to think about who's trying to disrupt us because surely as we are all sitting where we are, we understand that there will be new players in the market that we did not even consider. If you have the same people doing the same thing, sitting around the same table, who's going to help you consider the unthinkable? The competitor that you did not even think was there lurking. Who's going to help you recognize that your client requirements that we thought we knew have been evolving and changing? It takes a wide demographic and segmentation, a cross segmentation of members, clients, partners, to be at that table, to share those ideas, and to say, what about this? And, and what about this area? Things that we thought would never work, we're doing right now. I mean, how many times did people say it would never work if we weren't on site at our client engagements? How many times did we think we had to be sitting right next to the person in order to get work done? And yet, in as little as one or two days notice, we've seen firms of all sizes move from being in physical locations to being completely at home. And so we have considered the things that we said will never work. Let's broaden that and look across other areas as well. Then we have to be willing to be mentors, coaches, and sponsors. It's important to understand that one size fits one. And yes, I understand that on page 45, section three, below the bottom page of the section with a number right above it, it says this in the HR manual that everyone does it the same exact way. And while I am here to tell you that leaders cannot lead every single person every single way, and yes, in order for it to scale on a broader, in a broader way, you do have to have some parameters, but you also have to recognize that everyone comes from a different context. They come with different resources, they come with different access, but there's still an opportunity for everyone to succeed and to put their best foot forward. And so we start thinking about what that communication looks like. We have to be compelling and consistent in our communication. And we have to have more than just words. If inclusive leadership is important for the organizations that you're in, then we should see an accountability plan. Because we've, we know this all too well, being CPAs, we like a checklist. We want to have things to do every day that we can check off and be accountable for. And if we don't have it written down, then pretty much it's just hope. And hope is not a strategy. We have to put actions to words in order to bring forth the most amazing and extraordinary results that we're all more than capable of achieving. And then, of course, we've got to look at the people, the processes, the funding, the data, the technology. What do we have in place? And what do we need to have in place in order to make a difference? And even if you're in an environment where the pipeline isn't there, or you have sent your HR teams out to ask, why don't we have a more diverse slate? Why don't we have more diverse leaders that have been promoted and advanced through the organization? We got to start with those questions. But even if you're in an environment and you're like, Kimberly, we've tried, we, our organization just isn't that diverse. Okay, that, that does happen. But I would also say from just being more aware of conclusive leadership, that you will be a better business partner, a better, a better trusted advisor, because you have a better understanding of your clients and you have a better understanding of how the world operates around you. The stakes are high. We are helping the next generation. We're setting the stage for them. They're ready to take the baton from us. In some cases, they haven't been that happy with what we've done, but I think we've tried. And I'm asking each one of you to try to say inclusive leadership starts with me. And because you're the Indiana Society of CPAs, I know that you are more than able to do all of the things that I've spoken about I have read what Erlen's heartfelt letter, um, what it said. It touched my heart. I hope it touched your hearts as well. I'm looking forward to seeing you out on the front lines of talking about how we're going to bring everyone along for this journey. We need to start today. The future is now, 
and I am hoping that we will have more inclusive leaders with us. Thank you again, and Jennifer, thank you so much for inviting me to speak. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Jennifer, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you so much for uh, joining us here and, and for recording that. Really, really appreciate it. Um, uh, you gave us big trends and topics that we need to know more about. I love that. And then um, really what you're talking about is how are we going to find, you know, the best and the brightest to help us, uh, you know, move into the future in a really difficult, unprecedented time. And, and to do that, I loved what you said about you have to look in uncommon places for uncommon talent. That that is something we are trying to do through our scholars program and, and that kind of thing. Um, I did see on a side note, a meme the other day that said, um, I really miss precedented time. I wanted to ask you if, um, if, I don't know if everyone's seen it in last week, uh, journal of accountancy, you had an article Mm -hmm. um, titled uh, Together We Can Make a Difference, 12-Step Plan to Address Racism and Unconscious Bias. Um, yes. I'm going to share that with everybody who participated today, but is there any takeaway from that? It's 12 steps, but is there anything specifically <laughs> you'd, like to, you'd like to mention today? Uh, I have a couple of favorite steps. But what Absolutely. Do you think? Well, I want to hear your favorites. And if the audience has looked at it, I want to hear theirs as well. But I think it starts with, first of all, just acknowledging that you have a problem. And I picked 12 steps, Jennifer, because it was kind of the 12 step plan that everyone always hears about. Yeah. And it always starts yeah. with, hi, I'm Kimberly Ellison Taylor, and I'm biased. <laughs> you know, so we all need to take some responsibility. But I also wanted it to be heartfelt. Uh, as CPAs and accountants, we like checklists. So we needed to have actual steps. It was feeling so big that people were probably overwhelmed because the, the magnitude of the challenge has been showing up in a lot of different places. And so I like acknowledge that there's a problem. I like listen. And I also like look at the data because there have been places where we haven't really looked at that kind of data and, and we should because there are a lot of things that we can find insights on how we pay, how we recruit, who's on our executive team, how long people stay in position. And we're not, I'm not suggesting by any means that we arbitrarily move people forward, but I think what people would find if they looked at the data that if someone's been in a place in a role for seven to eight years, there are other people moving around them and now they've been sitting there a long time. There are either a couple of things. One, that there could have been a bias, but it also could be that maybe the person needs some additional training. You can't lose by using this data to either help you retain professionals or also help you identify succession plan leaders that you may not have considered before. Yeah, that's a really good point. One thing that I've been thinking about a lot during this um, pandemic situation is um, this is a great time to kind of look at your team in a different way, if you will. Sometimes in a crisis, um, leaders evolve that you didn't necessarily expect. True. And I feel like there's been a great opportunity to kind of watch how people handle something like this and how they adapt to working in a different environment and that kind of thing. Um, so that's that's my side note. But one other thing, a couple things in your article I wanna highlight, yes. and I encourage everyone to, to read it if you haven't, but um, what I really like is that you talk about um, acknowledging that you will say the wrong thing. <laughs> People will say the wrong thing, um, and it's better than saying nothing. Because I know for one, uh, as much as I feel like the society has done, um, mm -hmm. To, to look in uncommon places and to bring new people in. Our staff is not diverse. And I have struggled with that. I have struggled with talking about diversity and inclusion because of that. But I feel like, kind of like you say in the article, it's better than saying nothing. And we're, exactly. we're trying. <laughs> exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. Um, another one is the money. I think you, you say um, something about you have to put resources toward things, right? Right. 
And I say that, Jennifer, one on the, the just giving our colleagues a safe zone. And I have always said this, and, and maybe you might recall, but sometimes we've been so politically correct that we have not digged right into the issue. And I've even gone so far as to say that in my professional career, and I'm 50, so just put that out there, I have never said the word racism as much as I have said in the last two weeks. And it felt like, oh my gosh, what are we doing? We've reached a tipping point. <laughs> So I, I know that people are going to say things wrong because why, why wouldn't you? I mean, many of us have grown up with words and things that we said that we may not have even known were racist, or we may have done things that we didn't know had a bias. I presume positive intent. So that's why I have encouraged other people to give people a chance to, if you know their heart and you know they're just not, their foot is in their mouth, they're not getting it out the right way, but look at what they're trying to say because I wouldn't expect that overnight people are gonna say it the right way. And I know that revenues are down. So the reality is, that's why I wanted to do a realistic plan. The reality is that we're gonna have to try to figure out how to do more of the great things we're already doing we're gonna to have to maybe focus a little more in a prioritized way for black and African-Americans and other underrepresented minorities because we're talking about inclusive leadership. So that means everyone. And then at the same time, we do need funding. So we are gonna be you know, across, I think every area and state societies included, looking for sponsors, looking for people, talent and process volunteers because you would not have it in the Indiana society alone to fund an initiative like this. It's gonna take a lot of us and it's gonna take a lot of, of rethinking and reimagining how we do it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's wonderful. And just being open to the idea that we have a lot to learn. And I, mm -hmm. I, I completely agree when you, you said, I mean, we're using new words now. Um, <laughs> we're, we're not new words, but words we should have been using, you yes, know? That's and, true. Um, it reminds me of years and years ago when we were in a meeting um, talking about uh, diversity of thought and mm -hmm. our initiatives. And one of our members uh, said to me, uh, grabbed my arm as I walked by her table and she was like, what does that mean? Are you talking about black and brown people? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> and I was like, of course, we're, we're tiptoeing around subjects because we don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, right. And really, we, we need to just say what we're doing. So um, that's true. Uh, with, <laughs> but I, again, I just want to say thank you for being here. I want to encourage everyone, like I said, we'll make sure you get this article if you haven't seen it to read it. Um, Kimberly is just such a wonderful bright light in the profession, and I am going to let you go now. I'm going to answer a couple more questions from the Q&A um, from my State of the sure. Society, but want to thank you again, Kimberly, for thank being with you. us today. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Okay, Bye -bye. take care. Bye.